We are recording and we should be live Yay. on Facebook. Are we live on Facebook? Um, anybody confirm we're live on Facebook? We're live on Facebook, Steve. Great. We're good to go. Well, Excellent. if anybody out there, um, thank you for your patience. It's been an interesting evening. Uh, but welcome to our third uh, Big County Birdwatch uh, live stream. Uh, this one's called The One That Got Away. Mm. And um, in particular, uh, this is the one that got away <laughs> that we were supposed to be on YouTube tonight. Um, but at seven o'clock or thereabouts, I started trying to do a test version and I saw this. Once I clicked a certain button on YouTube, uh, because we've not live streamed there before, it's a new account. We have 24 hours to wait for them to get their act together. Uh. <laughs> so apologies for those of you that might even now at 8.30 be waiting on YouTube for us. Um, we ain't there, we're back on Facebook. Um, but I will get this loaded up to uh, YouTube as quickly as I can, just take an hour or so to process so it's not instant um and um yeah let's stop the share of that screen i've seen that enough tonight yeah. <laughs> but uh, we're on facebook and it's good to be with you tonight um talking about our big county bird watch day so um how have you been guys are your uh, waterproofs oh. still uh, holding up it's, it's been a bit wet yeah, it's been absolutely horrendous today. We've spent, what, 12 hours in the field today uh, from half six this morning till half six tonight. And it's been relentless rain all day. It just hasn't stopped at all. And, and it, at both, um, both sites that we visited, um, the wind was horrific as well, uh, particularly Holland Haven. Um, at one point I dropped my, or my scope cap came off and I didn't realise until we stopped to get a wing break. So I had to walk all the way back to try and find it, which luckily I did. But then coming back into the wind, I was leaned forwards and just couldn't. It was like that, walk. leaning forward into the wind. <laughs> like that. Crazy. But wow. it was brilliant. It's a brilliant day. It was a brilliant yeah. day. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had enough of that on Friday when I was out <laughs> treading the marshes of East Tilbury while you were hunkered down in the bush shelter or whatever that it is down at Canby Island, the, the sea watchers kind of, you know. So, uh, yeah, I can kind of uh, empathise with you there. Uh, Elaine and I went out this morning for a few hours at uh, Coal House Fort, and then um, we had uh, church, and then afterwards um, Harvest Festival today, which is interesting. Oh. Um, but um, we went back out to Thameside Nature Park. So we've kept it local pretty much for the whole weekend. And as I said, really kind of what I've got today is pretty much what I've got for the weekend. I do have possibility of a couple of hours tomorrow, but it's going to be tight. So um, I'm kind of probably going to be hanging up my wet cap tonight <laughs> and <laughs> leaving it there because it's been similar. We didn't have the rain that you guys had, but we've had the wet all day here. Yeah. But let's um, catch up on other people's reports. People are feeding back to us and putting stuff out. Matt, you've got uh, some news for us on what's about. Yeah, I mean, we've actually got quite a lot of um, sightings today. So we're going to start off um, uh, Holland Haven, uh, which obviously Steve and I have visited today. Um, we bumped into Max Martin, um, who's uh, the young lad that put the yellow brow video on yesterday. Brilliant. And just for anybody that didn't um, manage to see the video properly, because it didn't really stream very well, I've taken a little still from the video. So you can hopefully see on the screen a bit more clearly um, the yellow brow warbler from from the Haven yeah. yesterday. Yeah, is, is that up? Yeah, yeah, yeah got that. Yeah, um, so that's a, by Max. yes, lovely shot. And we, we, that was still there today. Actually, we we heard it calling by the dipping pond. Um, but we all four of us ended up trudging round um, to the to the hide um, overlooking the scrape. And um, young Max picked up a, a jack snipe as well. Um, we, we just had a common snipe fly past um, and then a jack snipe flew past shortly after and you could clearly see the difference in size, the difference in jizz um, and the, the length of the bill was obviously a lot shorter too. Um, and then Steve had, we think, probably a second bird um, on the marsh as well, which was good. 
Um, yeah. We've had reports through from David Lowe in Nayland, who's reporting there are still regular red kites over the last week um, going over Nayland. There's been red kites throughout the year, really, and, and he, he's regularly reporting them, which is great. Um, Ed Keeble had three sandwich turn off the walls at uh, Manningtree Misley today. Um, big shout out to Alf Mullins and Phil Carter at the Hive. Um, they've updated the, the website today and uh, they've actually had 126 different species this year so far, which I think for a site like the Hive is incredible. Fantastic. Uh, and over the last three or four days, they've had wheat ear, kingfisher, stone chat, common snipe, common sandpiper, rock pipit. And four Dunling, which uh, Phil Carter reliably informs me are, uh, is kind of a bit of a hive mega. And so uh, that's that's really good. Um, Mo Jackson in Wivenho had, had a Chetty's Warbler in her garden, which is pretty pretty cool. Really, yeah. That's pretty impressive. Pretty good. Um, we've got yellow brow Warbler and Tree Pippet at St. Osith. That was reported by Clive Atkins. And there was also a uh, short-eared owl reported on the Denji Coast today as well. Um, and then down... To your sort of area, Steve, Fess. Um, we've got Paul Larkin uh, reported a juvenile Arctic turn at East Tilbury. Um, Pete Merchant reported Pintail at East Tilbury, which I think is a new new bird for the yeah, weekend. Yeah, that was yesterday. Right. Pete saw yeah, those. Um, and then Ben Rumsby. Um, I think you bumped into Ben today, didn't you, Steve? Um, yeah, and yeah. He yeah. sounds like he's had a busy day. He visited Hanningfield and Bowers, where he's had tree creeper, nuthatch, sparrowhawk, uh, red crested potchard. Um, at Bowers, you had great white egret, spoonbill, short-eared owl, two barn owl, and a possible black neck grebe as well. Um, yeah. So that's re really uh, good good news from Ben. Then he went on to Coalhouse Fort with yourself, Steve, and you had curlew, sandpiper, and bartel goblets, I think. Yeah, he did. He was by himself, actually. He um, messaged me and told me he was going there, so I put him right on them. Excellent. <laughs> And, and finally, um, we can't obviously have a, a, a sightings report without mentioning Daryl Style at the Nays. Um, again. So, again, yeah. Legend. So, not only did he find the Dusky Warbler yesterday, he also managed to find a couple of ring oozles, four firecrests, and four garden warblers yesterday. And then today, he had a hawfinch um, flying to the hornbeams on the, on the seaward slope. Um, he had pie fly catcher. Um, he also had Richard's pipit fly over as well. Um, calling, which is a fantastic bird for that area. Whether it's the same one that was at Langard yesterday, I don't know. Um, and he had a few other bits, but we had those as well, didn't we, Steve? So I think we're going to mention them later and maybe still still some of these thunder, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Just wanted to share this um, picture as well. Did you talk about Andy um, Andy uh, Mersey Bird or Andy Field? Yeah, Mersey Bird. Yeah, this this was, um, I think this was reported just before Thursday. the week started. On the Thursday, I think, but yeah. what a cracking picture of a wheat ear. Cracking here, wheat ear, isn't that? Yeah. Isn't that sweet? You can clearly see, obviously, one of the one of the diagnostic features of wheat ear is when you see it fly off, it has a very, very um, bold white rump with a with a black tail, and you can clearly see it there um, on it on its on its photo. So fantastic photo there from Andy Field. Really good. Right. Yeah. Thanks for allowing us to use that, Andy. Um, and I just want to give a from big, Mersey. Just want to give a big shout out to Daryl Style and Ben Rumsby as well because they, I think they're probably both watching. So if they are, well done, guys. Good work. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Well, should I go first with um, our sightings down at East Tilbury? We uh, went out this morning, um, eight-ish, and uh, walked around uh, all the all the uh, usual spots looking for curlew sandpiper and little stints down at the water tower that's the only where they favor the mud there um no joy um but uh enjoyed ourselves all the same walked through the triple uh, si area uh which was quiet and um and then we walked back uh, near to saint catherine's church and were greeted by a family of house martins Two juveniles, two adults, flying together there uh, over what we call the paddocks. And uh, that was a new species for us um, on the site and also uh, for my list. So that was, uh, that was a nice uh, end to that little trip. And then this afternoon we were, should we go to Bowers? Should we go, you know, um, back round to East Tilbury? And I thought, well, I'm just going to kind of work the local patch, really. Uh, I'd say I'm a mile from so from Mucking and a mile from East Tilbury here in Linford. And uh, we went down to uh, East Tilbury and uh, there was one species, specifically uh, one that I wanted to see. Um, oh. 
I'm pretty excited oh, now. Not that. Oh, we saw this. Oh. <laughs> a rather <laughs> wet squirrel. Up a tree. <laughs> uh, let me try and share another one, which is this. That's one <laughs> from yesterday. Oh, that's good. What do you think oh, nice. about that one? Lovely. Bearded tip. When it wasn't when it wasn't blowing a gale. Yeah, uh, when it wasn't blowing a gale. Uh, and nice. I'm looking for my other one, which was um is it bearded tit or bearded reedling now? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. There's some oh. debate, isn't there? Kind of uh, yeah. for me it's um bearded tit. tit, not the best yeah. picture. Agreed. Um but um this was our target. And no, we weren't playing battleships. What is if it? I zoom in, what do you think it is? A red boy. <laughs> it's yellow. You call yellow. It oh, yellow on. boy, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it yet? Uh, Can you see them yet? A hippo? No. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you see here, behind this rope? Yeah. yeah. Two turnstones. Uh, right, oh. okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, now we're talking desperate, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, Should have got the savers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were two turnstone out there, and then, um, but finally, I think, I think there's record shots and there's record shots, Steve. And that's <laughs> record shot. mm. <laughs> yeah, spot the bird on that one then. Now, oh, I think there was one of those at Aberton yesterday, wasn't there, Steve? No, there wasn't. But, <laughs> 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 but that's it another might, story. It might be tomorrow. Could be tomorrow. There, there will be down there. Nice, that is. But, yeah. um, can you see it yet? I can. Is it a peg? It is. Hey, I can see it. And um, I'm just feeling for all those people on mobile phones now looking at this, kind of pulling out, pulling out, <laughs> all the way along that train. <laughs> I should have maybe done it with a zoom. How's that? That's better. Now you can see That's it. That's better. Yeah. Right Much underneath better. the sign. Everyone's. Yeah. Everyone's at home looking for a magnifying glass to use it on. <laughs> there you go. It's a big old bird, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Female, no. probably. Yeah, looks like a female. We yeah. actually saw a bird up there when we walked down the path. So, so for those of you that have never been or are new to TMP or new to birding, you know where to look now for the peregrine. Recently, there's often been a pair there uh, with a juvenile. I think this is probably the female. I don't know whether you can correct me on that, Steve, if I'm wrong, but it's like, yeah, I mean, it looks like an adult female. Yes. And they are running the Avocet ragged down there, rarely catching them, but it's almost like the youngsters learning to hunt. Um, oh. Generally, kind of as the tide's pushing in a couple of hours before high tide, and on weather like today, they'll sit the, um, the leeward of the wind side of cranes and things like that. And um, But when, when um, we walked down, just saw this kind of black backed type gray bird and just that white fluffy area here. Mm. And I thought, no, that's not the peregrine, that's a cormorant sat up there. What's a cormorant sat up there? I've never seen one sat up there before. But then as I got kind of closer and checked it out, and it just lifted its head a little because it was so, you know, shoulders down, kind of hunching in the horrible weather. And well, um but I there's think, a peregrine just for you, Steve, because I know you're um, you're keen on them at the moment. Yeah, I think that's that's a good tip as well for anyone that that is sort of relatively new to birding. Um, whenever you go anywhere where there's pylons or tall buildings or mm. cranes, um, the, the first thing I do, particularly if it's near a wetland where there's lots of potential prey for a bird like a peregrine, the first thing I do when I get out of the car is quickly scan, you know, scan all the tall structures um, and they're, even from a distance, they're they're pretty pretty good to spot. You know, they're quite upright, don't they? Yeah, like a big big upright blob on a on a tall thing is quite often going to be a peregrine. Yeah. Um, but okay, so uh, go on then, Steve G. Tell tell Steve what we uh, and and the listeners as well. I'll just see. tell you. So oh, we ended. Oh. Peregrine was oh. a new species. Oh. Oh. Of course, turnstone was a new species, and there were two on there, and oh. um, we ended at. Ended on 99. So oh. there's there's another one that got away for our target. Yeah. <laughs> My target was 100. And I'm so, still looking for song thrush. Oh, well, so you should have. So um, myself, Matt, and Terry Malby, we uh, headed up to Holland Haven at first light this morning. 
And as we walked along the, the Esplanade there, the bushes were alive with robins and, and song thrushes. Well, wow. Yeah, lots of song thrushes today. And they even, they were just dropping out of the sky in the rain showers, which was absolutely fabulous to see. Brilliant. So yeah, as Matt explained earlier, we had a yellow brow down by the dipping pond at, at, to the Haven and Jack Snipe from uh, the Hyde. And there was also Avocet there, which was a new one for my list for mm -hmm. this weekend. And there was just, you know, Sparrowhawk and, you know, lots of teal, a few widgeon, swallows, small passage yep. swallows. And then whilst we were in the bushes, there were flocks of siskin flying over. Uh, I think we had uh, six or seven black caps in one bush, which was yeah. nice, eating nice. blackberries. Um, and then from there, well, we got very wet, in fact, <laughs> very wet. Um, and then we, we headed yeah. off up. We headed off up to the Nays, and the first thing we did was uh, a hot cup of tea in the cafe and uh, a spot of lunch. Was and that when I asked you how it was going? You sent me this yeah. picture. And this was the highlight. This was the highlight of the morning session was <laughs> uh, a piece of wonderful home cooked bread pudding. And uh, okay. our, the, the Bird Watching Society chairman, Jerry Johnson, is, is a bit partial to a bit of bread pudding um, from this cafe. So, so we had that, and then you see there's. Um, Sorry, can I just point out that um, that it wasn't me that asked for the tomato sauce for the bread pudding. Okay. <laughs> just want to point that out. <laughs> I, I want to know, did you get that on commission? Because you were going to tell him you're going to put a picture of it on tonight's live stream. <laughs> we should have got some free. free yeah. Uh, yeah, never thought of that. Said, there, there was a great big picture of a med goal inside the cast that yeah. someone did on the wall. So, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Steve might have been there before, to be honest. It was just a strategically, it was a strategically placed menu there with the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so um, so once we'd had our bread pudding, we waddled, we waddled across <laughs> the, uh, the the fields, and um, yeah, lots of gold crests this afternoon um, in the sycamores, and we just mooched our way south, and we'd heard Daryl Styles' reports of uh, Richard's Pippet and Hawfinch. So we headed down and uh, we headed down some, to some hornbeams and we're just standing there and uh, local uh, birder Sean Nixon and photographer turned up and I just happened to glance to my right and there up popped a lovely fire crest. Beautiful. Which was nice. And then he left and then literally, what, 30 seconds later, I looked in the same spot again and there was a yellow brow warbler sat there. Excellent. So, you couldn't make it up. You, you really couldn't make it up. Brilliant. It fantastic. Um, and then from there, we just made our way into the John Weston Reserve, and there were song thrushes just everywhere. Mm. I mean, literally. I mean, we must have seen fifty or sixty in the just the reserve itself. Um, and then we heard the dusky warbler calling briefly, and then we got a bit of a flight view of it. But the weather by then was terrible, so we sort of oh, we had brambling. Yeah. Nice male nice. brown. Oh, and we had a red start before then. Yeah. Wow. Oh, and, 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 it keep, oh, tree yeah, pipit. Yeah. Well, must... to, to, to be fair, the tree pipit, I, I saw a bird fly in, which Steve also saw, but instantly Steve called it as tree pipit because he heard a call. And I don't know, I mean, I just didn't hear it. I, I, whether whether it was more practice, I guess, or whether it was just so yeah. windy. But um, yeah, no, Steve called it instantly. And we got some good views of that, actually, didn't we? Really good. Do you know yeah. what? Typical because it was raining, we all left our cameras behind because, you know, a waterlogged camera is not great. Mm. And you know what? We had some great views of some of the birds this afternoon. Sandwich turns, sandling. Yeah. A little group of sandling was nice. A few, few brink geese um, going past on the sea, which was good. Yeah. good. Um, and just, yeah, I mean, to be fair, I think that the main thing for me today was over both sites, the quantity of robins, particularly. Um, and then um, again at both sites, song thrush. I've never seen so many song thrush in a day. Um, last year, the Big County Bird Watch, which we did obviously towards the end of September, I remember on the last day where we all met up at Aberton, um, where we obviously helped Steve win. Um, <laughs> okay. after, after we finished there, I hadn't seen a song thrush all weekend. So I actually stopped at the hive for the last half hour of, of daylight, trying desperately to find a song thrush because I'd had them down there previously. Um, and, and no joy. Today, we must have had overall well over 100 song thrush at both sites. Yeah. It was incredible. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, and then just to, just around the day off, it was getting dark. I'd still not seen green sandpiper. So Matt, Matt, as a gentleman like he is, took me to Ardley Reservoir. <laughs> and lo and behold, there was a green sandpiper. <laughs> and, and I got kingfisher. And then I heard the kingfisher calling and Matt got a kingfisher. So <laughs> a win-win win situation. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, wow. So I, to I, to I had a quick total up tonight whilst I was having a five minute soak in the bath. Yeah. Um, and I'm on 127 species. That's good. Which well, is good. Elaine and I saw one this afternoon, um, Steve, that she, she insisted that I share with you. Uh, ah, nice. Have you got one of those yet? Yeah, got one. Uh, in the, yeah, about four o'clock this afternoon, we had green finch. Not the best shot, but um, <laughs> you, know, you need to take a picture of that and share that with Steve tonight. So yeah, it was it. better than the view we had today. So uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, I think my time... My total for the weekend so far, I'm on 110, I think, so I'm a little bit behind. But A, I, I'm actually genuinely not bothered because it's just really good fun. And mm -hmm. I think for, for anyone else that's taking part this year, um, hopefully, um, you know, that everyone's feeling the, the buzz, even though we can't all do it socially this year for obvious reasons. Um, but hopefully everyone that's getting involved is still enjoying doing it and enjoying the updates. And um, Obviously, I'm on 110. I've still got Aberton, which I've not been to yet. So I plan to hopefully get there tomorrow. And a big day tomorrow, then, eh? Maybe, yeah, yeah. Now, that sounds like a phenomenal day. Um, and um, it's going to be... Sorry, you're going to say? I was just going to say, Matt, um, you know Donald Trump was going to build that wall across Mexico? Oh, yeah. Well, he hasn't done it yet, so I've built it around Aberton. <laughs> oh, thanks, mate. So there's no access for you tomorrow, OK? So... Uh, <laughs> I would say I'll bring my ladder, but I'm not very good on ladders, so I'm just going to bring a spade. I'll go under it. <laughs> well, if he's playing that one on you tomorrow, um, Matt, I'm pretty certain today he played the kind of trick that, again, I, I came up with kind of, I'm looking at the feed all the time through uh, through the day to see where that dusky warbler turned up. Because <laughs> I, I said last night that if it, you know, turned up during the church service or kind of in time in the afternoon, yeah. there was a chance that I'd get over there and see you and meet it. But... When did I find out about it? 20 past seven tonight when he tells me. And he kept it off the feed as well. So yeah. I was looking, which is part, which is the main reason I titled tonight the one that got away, but it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just I, I, 100th I, did. I put a quick tweet out and, you know, I was trying to remember the stuff that we'd seen and I forgot the best bird that we saw all day. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm, blaming yeah. on the bread, I'm blaming it on the bread pudding. But yeah. no, that's a great, um, great day. The other interesting thing is we're a couple of weeks later than we were last week, last year. I wonder whether that's having an effect in terms of what we're seeing, particularly for birds like the song thrush. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think we're almost, yeah, I think late September is probably just a tad too early for migrating song thrushes. But once, yeah, I mean, obviously we've been blessed this weekend with easterly winds. Yeah. Uh, but I think this period from like early October onwards, is just traditionally a great time for song thrushes, you know, yeah. and because what what I often find interesting. This is why I love the reports that people put out, you know, um, particularly at Frinton, and then I look at the Land Guard Bird Observatory as well to see what they see. What you said today, I'll bet, and the weather's probably going to kind of calm a little bit tonight. I don't know when it's going to stop. We'll have a look at the weather report in a minute, but those song thrushes are going to be coming through mucking in our area within the next day or two. I'll probably start mm -hmm. to see them maybe even tomorrow morning. And when people are recording on a weekend like this, it'd be fascinating to see where these birds are actually kind of being seen, you know, and when, to see if there are any patterns and things. We were talking last night, weren't we, about these kind of feeding stopovers. Yeah. Because the more we know about that, the better we can kind of help, you know, and educate and also, um, you know, share details for things like planning consents and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, I think, as you say, a lot of it's been driven by the weather. It's been like quite a unique uh, weekend, hasn't it? Whether, you know, I noticed the eye of this kind of storm has been set between Leicester and Cambridge when I looked today. Yeah. But um, what's the weather doing tomorrow? Steve, are you going to update us with yeah, that? So, well, you'll be, well, for those uh, heading out tomorrow or just, you know, bird watching in their garden, the good news is, 
the rain's supposed to stop tonight, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So the wind, the gusty winds are going to drop. Yeah, exactly, Matt. <laughs> the, gusty, the gusty winds are going to drop tonight. Um, so tomorrow they're forecasting um, just light winds, well, sort of 13 mile an hour winds from the southwest and sunny spells. Short, shorts and t-shirt then. Well, com <laughs> compared with today, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, so basically, um, anything that's been grounded today, so like the song thrushes and maybe more other warblers, gold crests, etc., yellow browds, hopefully bright weather tomorrow morning, they'll be out and about. So a great time to check coastal sites and inland sites. Yeah. Um, and obviously like uh, reservoirs as well, the water shunt won't be too choppy. So, you know, yeah, good day tomorrow. Yeah, be interesting also to see whether, the, again, when the weather stills a bit, that there's kind of like a bigger influx of birds even tomorrow yeah. um, coming in onto the coast. Certainly I've been seeing reports of short-eared owls coming in yeah. and, um, and elsewhere further north they've had quite some, you know, quite a few rare birds, haven't they? Kind of raddies, warblers and stuff like that, yes. that we can get those filtering. One, one bird that I think has been notable by its absence, um, only seen one record that I recall, and that was at Walton, I think yesterday, was a pied flycatcher. Now there were stacks of pied flycatchers around up north and um, in, in Norfolk. And often, you know, I was up in Sperna three weeks ago and you were kind of, you know, 20 or 30 around. And usually when you have that kind of influence onto the East Coast, you do get some filtering through kind of Essex. And I, I haven't seen much of that. So whether they're, you know, I'm still seeing reports of them, whether they've been stuck mm. and they're going to start moving, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's what I was going to say. I think Daryl had the pie fly catcher at the nays today, but um, I was going to ask, because obviously I'm still learning, after this bad weather, when the birds come into the country, do they are they likely to sort of be hunkering down for a day or two, and then when the weather clears, maybe tomorrow, yeah. will they then sort of disperse and then get seen in other locations? Is that what happens, I guess? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's after, I forgot to mention this afternoon, we had a spotted fly catcher this afternoon. No. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a bit skulky, like it had just, and it was keeping really low to the ground, yeah. like it was. It had just arrived and was just feeding up. But like you say, Matt, yeah, these birds will hunker down, feed, and then when the conditions are right, they'll get going. Because obviously now the weather, the temperatures are dropping now. Not so yeah. many insects, so they've got to get south, you know. Yeah. But I think yes. the, the uh, pied flycatchers. I think. Um, Certainly in Essex, we tend to get them in sort of September, late August, September time. Mm. So now it's getting a little bit late in Essex. Mm. So, you yeah. know, spotted and pied flycatchers in the last yeah. couple of days is quite late records. Yeah. Yeah. Elena now walking through a little bit of woodland on the edge of the um, Thameside Nature Park and um, looking for song thrush. And there were two um, chip chap feeding very close to us, yeah. uh, some gold crest as well around but the um the chip chap i've actually got a picture but the the light was so dismal i didn't kind of put it up on tonight's program but it's actually got a decent sized fly in his mouth in its mouth so even though it's raining in the trees you know these leaf warblers were actually really going for it and feeding and so um you know they look like the, the food's there for them to actually bulk up and then go yeah i mean right, i think okay so the, well, the crest our hopes and us sorry matt Sorry, I was going to say, just picking up on what you were just saying, the, the, the gold crests that we were viewing today, I mean, there was quite, quite a good number of gold crests, sand chiffs as well, yeah. and they were all very active, weren't they, Steve? Yeah, really, really. yeah they were all hovering. And again, places like sycamores are always worth checking. There's, this yeah. time of year, there's loads of insects under the sycamore leaves, so you see the gold crests sort of hovering. Yeah. Like little mini hummingbirds picking up insects. So always worth, always worth checking your local sycamores. Yeah. Please give us your feedback and um, like the stuff. Um, you were looking, Steve, how many views and stuff like that have we had? We were yeah. amazed at how people are. Yeah, I mean, I think overall in the last, what, last three days we've been doing this, I think we've had something like 500 views of our um, videos either on Facebook. So as we've, if, you, if you're new to viewing us so, you know, tonight, so we've got uh, our website, which is www.ebws.org.uk, where you can enter your sightings for this weekend. And we've got, it's a wonderful website. There's lots of photos on there. 
There's a, an Essex birding site guide. So a guide to Aberton, Hanningfield, where to watch birds. And also apart from that, we've got um, Twitter. We've got a Twitter uh, page, which is at Essex Bird News, um, which is updated, well, daily um, with all recent sightings from around the county. And then also we have our Facebook page, which is at EBWS Info. And now we have our YouTube channel, which if you just search Essex Birdwatching Society on YouTube, you can subscribe to that. Um, and then you get all our updates and future videos. So, you know, this medium is a great way of spreading the word about the Essex Birdwatching Society and birds in Essex. Yeah, and definitely. Be- and please, please use those feeds, those social media feeds, um, to get as many you know pictures and, and as much content and feedback and sightings across us as you can because yeah. um, it's all really useful stuff and obviously uh, we tomorrow night we're, we're probably going to do some kind of a, a maybe a photo slideshow or something I don't know yet but um, if you can get anything across from the last few days then uh, then hopefully we can include that yeah yeah no it's good and I'll um, put this video this live stream up on YouTube um as soon as i can after this so uh, we're kind of you know cross-pollinating both sites mm-hmm. and uh, also putting video up on the website one thing in particular we're hoping to do it's looking positive that we will have one of our indoor meetings will become a virtual meeting before the end of the year and uh, we're hoping to have a talk on nocturnal migration Ooh. so um wow. please you know kind of subscribe if we don't have your details then look on the website and i'm sure the membership secretary in fact we've actually got him an email which is info at ebws.org.uk um, as well that if you kind of send a message there that you want to be kind of on the uh, mailing list then we'll sort out that um, regarding membership i was going to have copies of our two journals um, just to show you and our, um, our Essex bird report that we put together every year um, but that's what the membership contribution goes towards and uh, that's 16 pounds for a year if you're interested the details are on the website and if you do want to join now you get three months free which will get you the uh, we're just about to have a journal come out any members that are watching I think the editor's still looking for any material that people want to contribute to that, just kind of an article or something like that. Um, details of that are on the website. But um, yeah, that'll be coming out before the end of the year in the next month or two. And you get three months for this year free with your next year's subscription for £16. So that's not too bad. So hopes and aspirations for tomorrow. Um, I was going to ask Matt if he can get all the photo collage and kind of last day feedback done and also get the YouTube account sorted out and do all that before he goes out birding tomorrow. Is that all right, Matt? I'll see what I can do. I'll I'll, I'll get up an hour before I go to bed, shall I? So if we're not on tomorrow night, folks, you can blame Matt. (laughs) What what are you hoping for tomorrow, Matt, when you're out birding, other than to Um, blow it into... (laughs) Being at Aberton, I've got a few bits and pieces I've not seen yet, so... Hopefully Egyptian goose obviously will be there. I've not seen a pot yard yet this weekend, um, so that's easy. Um, fingers crossed corn bunting, yellow hammer maybe, um, rough, great white egret, goosander. So there's a few bits and bobs. I don't think I'm going to catch up Steve's total, but like I said before, it, it really doesn't matter. It's, it's the, the fun of doing it. And it's also just seeing what's out there this weekend. That's the whole point of this, isn't to, to win or lose. The whole point is to see what birds are in the county. So as a, as a society, we get a better snapshot of the species out there and, and where they're located in, in, on this particular weekend. Yeah. yeah. I think there's more birds being seen this year uh, in general than last year. I know, Steve, you've already proved that with your total. I think I had around about 220 um, last year, 221 off the top of my head. But, um, yeah, 227, that's great. And... Uh, still one or two that you've not seen that others have. So I think the total is going to be up. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I mean, we've been, I've been to Canvey, Aberton, Holland Haven and Walton. So I'm there the places that I, I go to anyway. So I've not particularly gone out of my way, obviously, with the uh, COVID 
situation, you know, try to stay as local as I can. Um, I'd be really happy tomorrow if I didn't get wet. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. yeah I'll well, to be honest, this morning I was doing a bit of a post-mortem and I reckon that you saw 20 birds that I've not seen just at Canby on that morning on Friday. So, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah. And then we this afternoon. Lucky. Yeah, we were very lucky on Friday that A, we saw some great birds, but B, we didn't get wet. We had great shelter yeah. and it sort of, we perhaps just rode our luck a little bit too much on Monday, on Friday, and hence we got wet today. So, yeah. <laughs> but I've enjoyed the local birding. I know yeah. during, during April we were all kind of, you know, forced to stay home, stay local. Yeah. And I did my exercise walks around East Tilbury and my, my patch and really got to know my patch, you know, well, because you're going out pretty much every day yeah. and you're seeing kind of, you know, where stuff is. And, um, yeah, I want to kind of uh, encourage those, you know, I know there's the, the, the big twitching and the national, you know, birding scene and things like that. And there's almost kind of, you know, attractiveness to that, you know, done a few little twitches and stuff like that myself but there's something in just kind of knowing your own area you, yeah you're not going to maybe get a grey phalarope or a skewer flying over there's somebody up in Cambridge had skewers flying over there at Cambridge yeah. 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 last week but um, it's just yeah seeing some of those common birds that we would call common and um, just getting to know them seeing you know the detail of their existence allows the movement when the summer ones move off and the winter ones that may be the same species as Matt was saying the other night, the robin that you see tomorrow may not be the robin you saw a month ago, you know, and just recognising those things and just, and for me, as I say, kind of over the weekend, just engaging with nature, there's something I can't get anywhere else, you know, I can watch a movie, I can play a video game, you can do lots of things relaxing, mm. um, but um, there's something for me that just happens when you're in the quiet, often by yourself or just with a friend, just enjoying and re-earthing yourself, really. Um, I think we get, for our wellness, it's yeah. um, it's something that we neglected our peril. So anyway. Oh, without a doubt, yeah, 100% yeah. agree. Yeah, 100%. yeah, it's been a lifesaver for me. So send us in your feedback and uh, keep in touch. And if any of you kind of are already, you know, beating... Steve's score, I would love to know. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, yeah, just kind of, you know, it's it's some fun. We love to know what you're seeing, how many you're seeing, and how you're enjoying the Big County Bird Watch this year. Tomorrow night, we're going to be back on Facebook at 8.30. We don't want to take the risk, because it's 24 hours and put us to 7 o'clock. We don't want to take the chance that we're, you know, last minute trying to kind of switch back or anything. So we're planning to be on Facebook. If we do manage to get the YouTube going, we'll send a message out and we'll switch everybody over to YouTube. Yeah. But um, BankCon has been on Facebook tomorrow uh, at 8.30 for our last day. And then we're probably going to have to have something as a follow-up in a week or two's time, maybe a week's time when we've collated the data and got the picture of what's, what's about. But we'll keep you posted on that. Thanks for watching again and hope you've enjoyed it. And um, hope to see you in the field sometime. Yeah. Bye for now. Good night. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye.